en question. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Reprise de l'audience. Before hand over the floor to la parole the va être donnée co prosecutors to à l'accusation make uh, his observation in relation to the request to present a document to the witness de sa uh, the chamber wishes uh, de to présenter un document au témoin make a notice that uh, judge uh, Korobkin is the, has an la chambre held issue que this le afternoon, juge so Korobkin he will not be present in the cet courtroom pour raison de during santé. this afternoon session. Now, the chamber gives the floor to the international deputy co-prosecutors who make observation on the, the document requested to present to the witness this morning. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, le President. We don't object to the specific use of ne this document under these circumstances, de but I want to make it very clear why that is. It's because this clair. is a one-page document, un document seule because page. counsel explained in very clear terms what he intends to do with the document, and we've had a two-hour break to review it. En outre, nous avons eu deux if any of those things were different, document. we would object. Si if it were a longer document, autre, nous if counsel had not explained si how he intends to use si it, expliqué, or if we had had less time si to review. And the reason we would object is because a lack of notice does cause us real prejudice. Uh, when a document is not noticed, by the time connu, we've opened it and taken a look at it, Council may be on their second or third question, and we still wouldn't have had a chance to figure out how it relates to the, the witness's testimony and to put it in context. And I should specifically note in that regard that we don't accept the idea that this document is so well known that everyone in the courtroom will immediately be familiar with it. In a case file with as many documents as this one, uh, no one can be expected to be familiar with the nuance of every page of every document, and that's one of the reasons that we have these notice rules. Uh, this in particular is a revolutionary flag magazine. There are quite a number of those on the case file, and they're fairly lengthy documents. So we understand that a, a degree of flexibility is required in the implementation of procedural rules, and we also realize that at some point we may be asking your honors for flexibility. But nevertheless, the rules need to remain the rules, and the exceptions need to remain the exceptions. So while in this particular case we don't object, we don't wish this to be understood as um, agreeing to any derogation of the basic rules that your honors have set out for noticing documents. If I may react, Mr. President. Um, it's um, an interesting answer, especially in the light of the fact that um, Surtout, the international co-prosecutor himself last week when examining um, the expert passée, came with documents which were not on the interface, and of course we didn't object to them. But it, I suppose the question touches on a larger issue, and that is, I understand that it is um, not the purpose of examination to surprise parties or to surprise uh, the trial chamber. Pas de However, uh, la chambre, things come sometimes up during the uh, uh, examination in chief that weren't anticipated in preparing uh, the witness. Um, so I think we should not stick to a very um, difficult rule, which as a rule is understandable as such. Uh, but if we stick to the fact that something has to be on the interface and we have no flexibility si as to um, putting documents in front of a witness, which in theory should all be known to the parties, uh, then I think we are maneuvering into an, an area which we really, uh, or in a sphere where we really do not want to come. 
So I think, uh, as a general rule, and maybe you should uh, make a general finding on this or general ruling on this, if it is a document well known um, to all the parties, well discussed at length sometimes uh, in 2.1, then um, of course uh, parties should avoid the element of surprise. Um, and we should all be able to, uh, if it's not on the interface, to, to find it and to look for it. But we should still be able to use it. So I think maybe uh, at this point in time it would be good if the trial chamber, if you trial chamber, make a sort of general ruling as to what should be uh, done in respect of this. Your Honor, I apologize for rising again. There's just one more thing that I meant to say that, that Mr. Coppa reminded me of. As I understand it, uh, his intended use of this document is to make the argument that the behavior of cadres on the ground did not match what he would say was a higher standard set out in Revolutionary Flag magazine. That in our submission is not an issue that arose during the evidence of this witness. It, it, it was foreseeable that that issue, uh, it, it was foreseeable before the testimony of this witness that that issue is one that he might like to have explored. Est-ce que votre position Merci. est la même concernant le placement des documents à l'interface Je m'en réfère à la position que j'ai développée avant le, la pause déjeuner, qui est finalement assez similaire à celle que mon confrère Copé a, a indiquée. Je pense qu'il est nécessaire d'avoir une règle de principe sur ce point. La règle, nous la connaissons, c'est que nous devons notifier aux parties la veille les documents que nous entendons utiliser lors de l'interrogatoire. Cette règle, elle est simple, c'est que c'est le principe du contradictoire. C'est un principe qui est marqué de manière très claire dans les principes généraux du règlement intérieur de cette Cour. Les parties ont la, le devoir de notifier aux autres parties les documents qui soient utilisés lors de l'examen de témoins. Donc ça me paraît difficile d'aller plus loin ou contre ce principe général d'organisation de nos débats. Maintenant, toutes les manières de, de, de lecture, je peux comprendre que parfois, dans certaines situations exceptionnelles, une question surgisse et que l'utilisation d'un document qui n'a pas été mis sur l'interface soit nécessaire pour la défense, pour le procureur ou pour les parties civiles, donc cela ne gêne pas en soi. So ce que je vous disais avant euh, la pause du déjeuner, c'est qu'il faut que les règles soient les mêmes pour tout le monde et que nous soyons avertis de ce qu'il existe, des exceptions aux règles. Course, Donc, notre position est la suivante. Situations. Nous souhaiterions que soit confirmé le principe du contradictoire so, like dans cette salle d'audience. Nous souhaiterions que soit confirmé le principe de l'utilisation de l'interface la veille de l'audience. Mais nous ne nous, nous opposons sure pas de manière exceptionnelle uh, à ce que des documents soient produits before, par les parties en cours d'audience si hearing, les autres parties ont la faculté That documents be presented. de lire ces documents If the other parties have the possibility et éventuellement, j'irai même plus loin, ont la possibilité de poser des, des questions relativement à ce, nou à ce nouveau document. C'est ce qui paraît aller au bout du principe du contradictoire. À partir du moment où on introduit un so, nouveau document, as as document les parties presented, devraient être aussi euh, habilitées à poser d'éventuelles nouvelles questions sur l'utilisation de ce document. Donc je suis d'accord finalement avec mon confrère sur ce point. Je pense so que la Chambre doit euh, donner une position de principe que nous, so que nous, que que nous puissions suivre pour la, le reste des audiences. Concerning 
document E3 slash 746 after your perusal, after your reading. So uh, what is your position si vous avez on uh, this document? Le document E3 bar 746, quelle est votre position à ce sujet J'aurais souhaité que la Chambre rende une décision de principe avant que j'ai à me prononcer sur l'utilisation de ce document. Euh, si I la Chambre rend une décision par laquelle l'utilisation exceptionnelle du document est autorisée, document, je n'ai pas de difficulté à ce que ce document soit utilisé par notre confrère lors de l'audience de cet après-midi. That is not a problem for me. Uh, Mr. President, uh, sorry to reply. Just to be clear, it, my, the purpose of my questioning was not necessarily to put the document before uh, the witness. What was my um, concern is to be able to use those very specific contemporaneous words and those revolutionary words, which, as I understand, are hardly used in crime anymore. It's not that, I, that he has to recognize the document, but because Ce he cannot. It's just about those words that, that you can see, which are not typical Khmer anymore. Just to word further debate, do I understand the party submissions correctly? They don't object today to the use of this document for the reasons given. However, everybody would appreciate direction, a directive by the Chamber on how we will go about the use of the interface in a more general manner. Do I understand that correctly? I look at all the parties and see heads nodding, because then we can go ahead. Yes, with the difference, of course, that we are hardly ever examining in chief, and we're always reacting. So nous things come up during the examination, and then we are in a nous different position. Nous interrogeons après and les we will Il y a des choses qui uh, surviennent, et donc notre position est différente. thought to that when we develop the general nous directive. Nous allons en tenir compte but de fixer nos consignes générales. Are we okay with this? Sommes so we can go ahead. There is agreement by all the parties that this document Toutes can now be used by the Defence Council la in this manner. Ce On an exceptional basis and with the understanding that there will be channel guidelines for the directive That's yeah. correct, Your Honor. Yes. Par la chambre. Exact. Yeah. Okay. Oui. Indeed. Thank you, um, Judge Fens. Merci, Judge Fens. Um, Mr. Witness, we had a long discussion Monsieur about témoin, um, things that really do not uh, concern you. Um, before the break, you might remember we were speaking la pause, about your unit chief, or very briefly about your unit chief, chief and your group chief. Et de group. Um, and I want to ask you if you be able to describe, if you remember well, um, the attitude uh, and, si and the way of operating um, of the unit chief and the group chief. Et le uh, how did they interact with you? De et how did they interact Comment with the other members of your unit? Avec uh, vous et what kind of person uh, was this unit chief? Uh, I would like to uh, use or to give you a few words si, uh, and ask you if these words possibly Pour vous uh, describe si ces terme the behavior of your unit chief and group chief. Um, le comportement du chef de groupe et d'unité. So, uh, my first, the first word I would like to use um, in order to ask you if that word describes the attitude and behavior of your uh, unit chief would be uh, authoritarian. C'est celui d'autoritariste. Peter Daika, Kenyan Kamata. Answer concerning Repose. the word authoritarian. Actually, the chief. Uh, uh, ordered us to do labors Le chef uh, every nous day. ordonnait de travailler chaque jour pour ce qui est du terme autoritariste. In his behavior, Question. was he, Dans son in other words, I would like to use uh, ici, je behaving like a mandarin. Un autre terme, est-ce qu'il se comportait comme un mandarin? Uh, 
not Jim Hall. Answer. The position of the uh, unit committee, they Le comité de l'unité absolutely uh, used uh, the workers to meet the uh, quotas les travailleurs of pour remplir les quotas de l'ANCAR. Question. Would you use the word militaristic to describe the attitude of your unit chief or your group chief? Qualificatif de militariste pour décrire l'attitude du chef de groupe ou d'unité? Answer. Réponse. Yes, uh, uh, I can describe oui. him as Je pourrais a le materialism. I heard something different back in the translation. Um, Comme I used the word militaristic. La défense. J'ai entendu autre chose dans la traduction. Moi, j'ai parlé de militarisme. But I heard something. Mais j'ai entendu Correction, uh, autre chose from the dans la traduction. Uh, I could him as a materialistic. <laughs> well, that's, I said militaristic, not mit J'ai dit oh, militariste, sorry, a militariste. A militaristic. Um, I did give um, the interpreters um, the actual Coppe passage from continue. the revolutionary flag, so they have it in front of them. Cité um, le passage pertinent de l'étendard révolutionnaire. Um, Mr. Ont Witness, would you describe your group chief or your unit chief as Monsieur a single-minded Akachet? Utiliseriez-vous le terme d'Akachet ou égocentriste pour décrire cette même personne? Answer. I uh, could not describe Réponse. him as uh, he is a single minded. Je n'utiliserai pas ce terme pour le décrire. Um, I think I have one more left. Question. Two more left. Um, would you describe either of them as bureaucratic or liberal? Pouvait-il être décrit comme étant bureaucratique ou libertin? L'interprète utilise ici la version française du document. Answer. I could not say they are or he is a bureaucratic or liberal. Okay. I've, I've given you some words um, in order to be able to understand how you would describe the behavior of your unit chief and group chief. Now in a more general sense, uh, could you, using your own words, describe uh, his behavior toward you and toward the group or the unit. Answer. I uh, cannot say anything about this. The reason I'm, I'm asking all this is because before uh, before the lunch break you were you were telling that you were fearful um, of him when you would complain. People would be fearful uh, of him because if a spoon would break, uh, he would threaten people to be to send them away. So I'm trying to to understand um, how things went in those years, what the interaction was between you and your unit members and the unit chief. So again, and that's, this is my last question on the subject. Please describe the attitude. Um, or stands, if you, want, if you will, of this person. De cette personne. When there was an issue, for example, of a uh, broken spoon, Nobody dared uh, to go and have any discussion problème, with the exemple, uh, unit chief. And this is exactly my question. Um, Maître Coppe, exactly ma question. The, 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 the problem that I want to um, discover. Why is it exactly that you were fearful of him? Comprendre. What made you fearful of him? Qui faisait que vous le We were fearful of him because Réponse. of 
What we saw that Nous is the disappearances of uh, people from the group and from the unit, and of course we presume those people who on disappeared died. But before the lunch break, we also Mais established que... that Mais la pause uh, disappearance is going away from the. Uh, the cooperative or the unit and not coming back and not necessarily uh, anything harmful to the person. Do you understand what I mean, Mr. Witness? No, I don't. Let me try it another way. I understand fear of something to happen is a personal non. thing. Maître but I'm trying to find out uh, whether you had or your group members had si real reasons to be fearful of your unit chief or your group chief. So I'm trying to figure out exactly uh, what he said, uh, how he behaved toward you, etc. So would you be able to shed some more light about uh, how he interacted with you and what made you fearful? et ce qui faisait que vous aviez peur de lui. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Witness. Peut I'll have one last remercie, small monsieur. subject, um, and that's the following. That's the situation of the aborder. food and the communal eating. La situation um, yesterday we had de la uh, a witness testifying coming et from uh, another commune, Hier, un and he told us that commune, on a regular basis uh, people were also eating fish. Uh, with rice and, and soup, and sometimes beef, sometimes vegetables. Was that the same uh, in your cooperative, your commune? It was uh, slightly different at my cooperative. Uh, we had our own vegetable for our own uh, unit, including the local vegetables, cucumber, or pumpkin, etc. But we didn't. Uh, we seldom had uh, pork or beef. It's very, very rare to have uh, this meat. And how about fish? Did you have? In your commune, uh, a unit, a fishing unit that would go out trying to catch fresh fish? In my cooperative, we did have a fisherman uh, unit, unit but there was no big pond or river in my area. We we only have uh, some small ponds, and uh, the group of fishermen would go and uh, find fish for us. And uh, let me give you an example. As for the fresh uh, fish we had for a, a bowl of uh, soup, we would have one or two pieces of uh, fresh, uh, fresh fish. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Um, Mr. President, this ends my uh, questioning. Um, I would like to take the opportunity, however, to correct myself. Um, earlier this morning, I said something about um, what is a record of um, hectares rice per, per ton. I used 16. It is, in fact, 14.8. Uh, I apologize. Quel était le rendement des cultures de riz J'avais parlé de 16 et It's en a Chinese fait, record, by the way. 14,8 tonnes par hectare. C'est un chiffre chinois. Oui, Monsieur le Président, juste yes, pour vous informer Mr. que l'équipe de Kyosampan n'a pas de questions pour ce témoin. The Kyosampan team has no questions for this witness.
President, Mr. Saohin, the Chamber is grateful for your testimony for today and the hearing of your testimony has come to a conclusion and you may be excused from the court and return to your residence or wherever place you wish to go to. And the court officer, please make an arrangement for the transportation of this uh, witness to his residence or wherever he wishes to go to, and that is uh, to do it in collaboration uh, with the RISU. And we have a, an issue to deal with, that is there has been a request uh, of a protective measure to the trial chamber for the next uh, witness for that reason. We uh, will take a 20 uh, minutes break and resume at 2.30 in order to deliberate and decide on the request for the protect protective measure for the upcoming witnesses. The court is now in recess.